Hey guys, it's Jackie M back again, and this is our second session today, and we are very, very excited to have Debbie Teal join us for Ramadan Kitchen. Guys, don't forget to say hello, let us know where you're watching from, and hit us up with any questions during this session. And I just realized I forgot to run the Tourism Malaysia ads earlier in our previous session. I want to run them now. Okay, we'll come back and say hello to Debbie in 30 seconds. Guys, it's Jackie M back again. And again, like I said, don't forget to say hello. And we have a very, very good uh, session here with Debbie Till, whose sessions are always very informative. But this time, she's actually showing us how to make something that I want to learn as well, which is an easy way to make popular skin. How are you, Debbie? Hi, hi, Jackie. Hi, everyone. Good to see you. Now, you're going to make popular basa. And uh, yes. tell us a little bit about the popia skin. All right. Uh, this popia basa is actually uh, found at a lot of uh, our Ramadan uh, bazaars here, especially in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, they normally serve it uh, dried or wet, I mean fresh with fresh skin. And the most important thing is that the sauce is very different, the basa Ramadan's uh, popia sauce. It's sticky and sweet and tangy at the same time. So you have three components. Uh, you have the feeling, you, know, you have the skin, and the sauce. The skin is very different because you don't need to do the, you know, the Chinese uh, Hokkien style, where you need to work the gluten, and then it becomes a real ball of dough where you have to have that movement. Uh, you have to like sort of like uh, master the skill of that movement yeah. to get your skin. This one, you just have to use a brush to brush it, and uh, it's easy. You do not have to stand the dough normally. Uh, that the old-fashioned dough, you need to stand it for like a few hours before it, it works on the gluten and then work on it. So if you were to fail, then you need to another stand another few hours to get it done again. So this one is straight dough. That means like mix the, the flour, quickly uh, brush it on your wok. If it doesn't work, throw it away, do it again. So it's very fast. That's why I like it. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Now I want, I want to check out the recipe. Okay, I'm going to let you take over the screen and I will disappear and come back and hit you up with questions. So just take it away. Guys, don't forget to say hello and let us know where you're watching from in the meantime and hit us up with any questions, all right, so that Debbie can answer them. All right, take it away, Debbie. Thank you, Jackie. Hi, everyone. Have a very good afternoon. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start with making the popia basa filling. Um, it's actually very simple. Uh, you have the yam bean and uh, carrots, actually any vegetables that you like or whatever that you have in your fridge. So your yam bean, the most important thing is that you need to either um, actually cut it and then wash it. The most important thing is you have to wash it in running water until the water runs clear. Why? Because um, this one has got a lot of starch. So if you do not wash the starch away, what's going to happen to your feeling is that it's going to be very gluey, one. Number two, it turns back very quickly. So when you wash them, and after you have excess uh, steam from uh, this particular uh, wrapping of popia, you can actually put it in the fridge. It wouldn't turn back. You have to heat it up. All right? Okay, so I'll start by heating the wok up, putting some oil, cooking oil, any cooking oil. Chop some garlic. Just saute your garlic. We have Steph Joe saying hello from KL. He says he loves fresh popia. Who doesn't, right? Everybody loves fresh popia. Sure. And the extra feeling that if you have excess and you do not have any more skin, you can use it as a vegetable to accompany your rice dishes. Yeah? So, yeah. So, I'm using some prawns. You can use chicken meat. Whatever meat that you want. If you do not want any meat, it's fine. So, but ch chicken gives you some natural umami. Yeah? So I'm using chopped tofu or tofu. 
over here in Malaysia, we have this kind, we call it tauku keras. So you just chop it all up, put it in. Uh, the popular uh, feeling in the Rama Bazaar Ramadan, we normally use uh, a lot of bean sprouts because that bulks it up. Okay, yeah. uh, if you want to use uh, bean sprouts, you can, but it tends to turn back pretty quickly. So I, for me, I omit it, but it, at the salt to bulk it up, to make it, to have more feeling, they will just put uh, bean sprouts in after frying all this. So you don't use a uh, dried shrimp. I find it interesting Sorry. that you use uh, fresh, uh, fresh prawns instead of dried shrimp. You don't put any dried yeah. shrimp in it. No, no dried shrimp in that. Okay. It's this cool. one I learned from the Malay uh, ladies who were selling the coconut basa. They said udang, udang basa. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Everything until it cooks. So the trick is that when you you need to cook this earlier, uh, you can't cook it and by its warm bread your popia in because the popia still is gonna break. So what yeah. I normally do is I will prepare the filling earlier, and you can actually render it like that. Okay. Oh, so you want okay. to just yeah yeah so it's easy. Now, if you so, can't find yam bean, uh, what would you suggest people use? Because yam bean sorry, can be a lot. Yeah, the, spicy uh, overseas, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can use the Buddha's palm. I think Buddha's palm in a lot of places is much cheaper. Buddha's palm. It's like I a... What is Buddha's yeah, palm? It's, yeah, it's green in colour. It's got... Um, quite hairy. It's like a god. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, I bought, yeah, so that's okay. pretty cheap overseas because yam bean is expensive. Overseas, I know I'm aware of it. Yeah, yeah. and and it's not always available. Yes, yes. Um, um, plant. So it's green in color. You just have to um skin it and then uh, slice it. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And I have a. Uh, uh, Parika saying hello from India, and we have oh, Meg, Meg, uh, Meg Tan saying hello. Meg Tan is actually one of your cookbook winners, uh, by the way. Oh, all right. By oh. the way, Meg, I'm wondering why you haven't received it is because um, Debbie didn't get the email from me <laughs> that I actually I actually sent to her to let her know. But for whatever reason, because we had yeah, two hundred. We had to process like nearly 250 winners of our recent giveaways. I think like we now got a little bit suspicious of our emails and thought we were spamming people because we had a bunch of people who didn't get our emails, you know. So I'm sorry about those who uh, who didn't realize. But yeah, Meg, in case you didn't get my email, you're one of the winners of Debbie's cookbook and she will be sending it out to you at some point. <laughs> so I'm adding salt, uh, pepper and sugar. Okay. I'm just adding the you can use long beans or French beans, whatever that's cheap. Okay, nice, nice. It's just for color, but yes. adds on to your vegetable as well. So you get that sure. crunch. Did you cut the carrots and the yam bean by hand or did you use a shredder? Uh I hand cut. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> because it because when you hand cut, even if you make a lot, you can be Freeze it and I, I bet you even from the freezer when you remove it out, it won't become too mushy. It will be a bit lean, but it will not be like glue and all stuck together. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> oh, oh, Meg says no problem. I shall wait patiently. Thanks again. No, you're so welcome. Thank you for taking part in our giveaway, Meg and everyone else who uh, yeah, who took the time. And what's that you just added? I'm adding some turmeric powder because it's a oh. Malay popia basa. All right, oh. so uh, turmeric turmeric powder, yeah. Right, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, using yeah, Baba's brand. Some people don't realize that, like in Malaysia, the same thing cooked by different 
<laughs> yeah, different races actually are a little bit different. So, popia, we have popia in Malaysia everywhere, but if, it's, if, you, if you buy from a Malay person, a Malay holka, it will be a little bit different to what you might get from a Chinese yes. or an Indian Correct. one. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, if you look at uh, your game bean and your carrots and all that, it's all still in holes. It won't be clumped together. Sure, sure. So, when you bite, yeah, that'll be nice size. So this is done. I'm adding in some uh, shallot crisp. Okay, sure. Shallot crisp. And very interesting. They have a uh, ground peanut inside. So I actually um, fried my own peanuts and I ground them. Okay, okay, sure. I don't know where I had popia where they sprinkle uh, ground peanuts on top as they, as they um, assemble it. So it yeah, is that, yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah, so this is done. Cool. So I'm going to leave it cool. Sure. Can I ask oh, what I sort of um, pan you're using? Is that a clay pot pan or um, no? No, this is a non-stick uh, pot. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. You can uh, cook it uh, on the stove and actually serve it right to your onto your oh. dinner table so it's easy yeah nice nice okay sure okay so this is done i'm gonna put it aside uh leave it to cool while i make the skin which is everybody's waiting for right okay <laughs> <laughs> and also the sauce i'm keen i'm keen to see the sauce how it's different to the yes the, the sauce is very interesting i i like it because uh, you can make it from scratch because sometimes certain places you can't get hoisin sauce when you're overseas Sure, yeah. Yeah. So it's good to, you know, make it from scratch, especially with simple ingredients like just dried chili. Sure, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Okay, I'm gonna put it there. All right. Um make the skin first. Okay, skin. Hold on. Let me move this. Okay, skin. Skin is just two hundred grams of plain flour. Okay, 200 grams of topping flour, uh, sure. half a tablespoon each of rice flour and tapioca flour. Okay. All right. Uh, so the tapioca flour gives you that, that elasticity so it doesn't break that easily. Sure. Okay, then you just mix it all in. 350 ml of water or 350 grams of water. Okay. Sure. I like to weigh the water because it's more accurate because measuring cups. <laughs> yeah. Some yeah. yeah, the ML is like so tricky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Victoria says good morning from Rotterdam. Morning, Victoria. So I don't add the salt now. I'm gonna add the salt once I've seed it. Why? Because when you add the salt, it's gonna build the gluten. So if you are making it in a large batch, what's gonna happen is that your batter will be all lumpy. Sure, right. Sure. So, salt. Half teaspoon of salt, and then I'm gonna sieve oh. the flour. In. The best part is that you do not need to grease the tray. Or, I mean, your pan while making the popia stew. I like the, uh, the, I like the, uh, the, uh, the metal new year ones. It's, uh, egg, so it's very, uh, sticky. And it's not, I would say, wouldn't say sticky, it's very fragile. So yeah. the pan needs to be greased properly, blah, 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 and all that. This is, I would say, so easy. And because it's like so fast, you can actually, this recipe makes about 10 pieces. So okay. fast, you can make them like maybe tonight. Yeah. Whereas the other one, you gotta let it like rest and all that. Yeah, yeah. Correct. yeah. correct. So much work. And then if it doesn't work, you have to start from ground zero and be like, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it a good stir so that the salt dissolves. 
Like that. You don't need to rest it. You can use it immediately. Uh, but if you were to rest it for like 20 minutes, it's, it works fine as well. So uh, no, no hard and fast rule. So, okay. So I'm going to start with uh, making the skin. Then I'll go back to the sauce. So I'm just using a nine inch uh, non stick pan. Okay, the trick is the pan might must not be too hot. Okay, if it's just warm to touch is good. So your fire, you need to really reduce it down to small, small, small heat. Okay, sure. Uh, Jit is saying hello from Auckland in New Zealand. And Victoria says, Debbie, please repeat the skin recipe again. It's 200 repeat. grams of plain flour, half a tablespoon each of rice flour and tapioca flour, and half a teaspoon of salt. And, yes. And 350 grams of water. Is that right? Correct. That's correct. Well, thank you, Jackie. <laughs> That's all right. So just a brush. Do not okay. put, once the pan, once the pan is heated up, uh, don't put it on the heat because what's going to happen that when you brush, you notice that the dough comes out. So don't no more heat once it heats up. Okay. Move it right and brush. It's a bit messy, but it's. I think it's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Can you use a silicon brush? Have you ever tried it with a silicon brush or? I've not you tried know. with a silicon brush. Yeah, I know. They so, might be a bit too different. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you just keep putting like, okay. You don't worry about yeah. like too many layers? No. So you okay. look, um, once it's covered like that, then just put it on back on, on the fire. And once it turns uh, opaque, you're done. They just flip it onto a tea towel, let it cool, and then repeat. Okay. Repeat. But make sure that your pan is not too hot. When it's hot, what's going to happen is that the dough is going to cook immediately, so it sticks to your brush. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you so cover, that's Can you cover it with the lid when you're cooking or no? You can. You can. You can. But I don't because I want to see uh, where it's cooked and why, where it's not. So I just move my pan. Sure. Very can you see? Can you see yeah. that it's like slowly turning, turning color? So it's like slowly cooking. Sure, sure. Mm. And you just wait till it so sort of like naturally like leaves the sides sort of thing, or yes, yes, it does. Can you see it's leaving the sides here, but some yeah. parts are not cooked yet. So I just like you know move move okay. the pan. Sure, sure. Interesting. Mm. I hope this is much easier. Is this much easier? Yeah? Yeah, 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 definitely. So so you don't have to pull it up. You have a tea towel ready in front of you and just flip. Okay. Okay? So if this is not okay. very hot, so what I normally do is I'll uh, move it aside, let it cool down. Okay. Let it cool down uh, and just... Sure, sure. Yeah. Just right. Why wipe when you wipe it down that it uh, reduces the heat? Because if it's too hot, you can't brush. You can't brush. Sure. So I'm going to do it again. I'm just opening this up. Okay. So it's quite so, like, yeah. It's, it's, it's very pliable. It's not, it's not hard at all. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's pliable. Pliable. Mm. So you see, when you brush, once you get the hang of it, it's easy. So you can also adjust to the size that you want. So if you find that this is too big for you, you want to make a smaller one, you can. You can, without having sure. to change a pen. All right? Sure, sure. How does the texture compare to the ones that are uh, made traditionally? The traditional ones are they are more water absorbent, uh yeah, because this okay. one, yeah, it's a very 
I would say very thin and uh, I would say elastic, but uh, yeah. you can't have too much of a, a wet feeling. So the feeling okay. needs to be like like this. Yeah. Okay. So now it's like heating up again. Can you see? Yeah, yeah. Slowly. Yeah. So you need a very slow flame, but it's pretty quick. If you notice that. Yeah, it's it is, on, yeah. We are going on to the number two uh, skin already versus the <laughs> that one. Yeah, yeah. Because if you do it the traditional way, when I do it, I still have to let the pan cool down as well. Sort of correct, thing. You correct. Or else it will, it, will, it will not stick, right? If it's too hot, it won't stick, then yeah, it will cook yeah. the dough on. Yeah, correct. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> correct. Yeah. So you can't escape it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. So, okay, you, you can see that there's some like, you know, holes here, like yeah, that. Yeah. All you can do is, don't worry, just. All right. Brush it up okay. to cover it. All right. Oh, so when yeah. you notice that it's like there's holes, don't worry. Just brush it up and then it's covered. Right. All right. So it's I think it's like stress free. <laughs> then as you go along, you know how thick or how thin you like your skin to be. Right. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So this is done. So. Oh. Okay. So with this skin, can you use it for fried popia? I haven't tried the fried one. I actually use it for the, the wet one only. Because sure. the fried ones, uh, over here we can use get the frozen one. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Uma is so, watching from London. Yeah. And Victoria says this is doable. Yeah, it's very simple and very doable. <laughs> You can uh, make it uh, and keep it overnight, but it tends to be hard on the sides of the skin, but still okay. Okay, sure. So what I like to do is once I cool it down, uh, once I cool it down, I will transfer to a plate and uh, because it tends to stick somehow or sometimes you can't see with your popia skin, I put a pandan leaf. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, because every time you'll be like, where's the skin? Where's the skin? You can't see. So <laughs> I, I do this. I do this. Yeah, that's because so, you yeah. come from pandan leaves are so readily available. Here, yeah, it's like gold. Yeah. <laughs> Here we have to yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever works, whatever works. Maybe a parchment paper that, you know, you can see where it is. Whatever works. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like that. So you can like pull one, then you know that's that's that skin. Oops. Cool. Uh, we have Sotni watching from Zook in Switzerland. Very cool. Hi. Hi. So this is done. So this is third skin already, right? Cool. So it's now if you don't have tapioca flour, if you don't have tapioca starch, can you use cornstarch, do you think? Uh I haven't tried with cornstarch. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but I don't think so. You can interchange uh, tapioca with okay. cornstarch. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, I'll stop with that skin now and I'm sure. going to do the chili sauce. Right. Now, the chili when sauce. You the, the skin, you got to cover it with, um, with tea a. Tea towel. Yeah. Does the tea yeah. towel have to be wet or no? No, no not necessarily to be wet. You don't have okay. to wet the tea towel. The tea towel is just dry like that. So I'm okay. waiting for the skin to cool down. Then I will put it on top. All right. Do not stack okay. when the skin is hot because it tends to stick. So every yeah. skin put onto a tea towel, let it cool down before you stack them up. All right. Okay. Sure. Cool. Okay. So very simple. The sauce is dried chilies. Uh, you actually soak and uh, or boil them until they are tender like that. Sure. Then. Uh, garlic. I used. Uh, I'm using ten stalks of uh, dried chili, two cloves of garlic, uh, hundred grams of uh, gula mera, or we call it uh, jaggery, jaggery. Sure. All right. Sure. Jaggery. All yeah. right. So all in. Everything very. Just chuck it in. Blend it. Watching Bristol. Hey, Zaleha. 
आय झाली जय हा माय माय सॉस आय गॉट नो पॉवर ऑन द ग्रीन the the orange one boy ah uh, okay i got the power if you guys if you're just tuning got it then uh, you so so uh, uh i'm using 20 20 ml of vinegar 20 ml of vinegar all right so, so just chuck it in because you need some liquid to move your blades right and it's done so right. this is done but That's i have it. to cook it no oh, you have okay. to cook it because you want it uh, to be gluey and nice right so put it into the pan because this is street food they need to make them very quickly and uh, water 100 ml of water and uh one tablespoon of tapioca flour okay so okay, sure. did you put any salt by the way sorry did you put any salt uh salt yes I haven't put it in yet but i'll put in salt sugar okay, and salt sure. okay yes so for all in salt to taste boil this until it thickens very quickly this is so fascinating these are like i've never seen the sauce made like this before this is really yeah, it's very interesting right so it's very yeah. gluey yeah yeah <laughs> So even when they spread it over the popiah goreng at the Pasar Ramadan, right, it remains crispy because the sauce is really thick. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then once it's done, you just add with some uh, more peanuts inside. Oh, in the sauce. Huh. No. Some big noise. Can you hear us still, Debbie? Okay, I think it's. Can you hear us still? I think there's technical issues. Um, I've just muted her for the meantime, but she. I don't okay. think she can hear us. Okay, sure, sure. We'll see how she goes. But we can see that she's just thickening up the sauce here. Uh, Paul, if you want to maybe just message Jehan and let him know. Um, okay, cool. So everyone can see how the sauce was made. It was just really, really interesting. She uses a, a gulamera or what she calls jaggery along with some blended chili paste and garlic and salt and and also some tapioca starch to thicken it up let's have a look that is the strangest audio i've ever heard okay hang on a sec okay as always debbie looks so chanty i i know right um zaleha I was telling her off air, do you have like an entire wardrobe that's just crammed in your, in your clothes? And she said, yes. <laughs> I'm just so jealous. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, let's have a look and see what she's doing next. Okay, Paul is just working on the audio in the background, but I think in the meantime, most people can see, like, can catch this very, very well. Okay. 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 Um. Yeah, can you just turn the sound of the half down? Okay. Yes. Just a yes. So, yes. Uh, okay, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, this is the scene. Okay. I just, they can see me. Let's have a look. Yeah. Let's change the layout so we can see it properly. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So just put it here. I'll give it side view. All right. I'm going to use the put down. Uh, feeling because this is still too hot. Yeah. Cool. Would you mind just repeating the sauce for um, ingredients again? Sure. Because uh, 10, 10 slips of uh, 10 slips of uh, dried chili, um, 2 cloves of garlic, 100 grams of uh, bulgogi or jaggery, 100 ml of water, 20 ml of uh, vinegar. And okay. Okay. And you and also tapioca starch to thicken it up. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's the consistency. It's very hot. So when it cools down, it's going to be even thicker. Right. Okay. Great. Great. So Zaleha was saying, saying that you look very chantic as usual. <laughs> cool. So, oh, you so you don't put lettuce or anything like that in it. Interesting. It's so like this at the Pasar Ramadan here. All oh, right. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. So they actually make it really It's like half that size. Right. I love how beautifully the skins turned out. Yeah. <laughs> it looks better than the traditional ones <laughs> that I usually make. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love this so much, how different it is to how the uh, the Chinese version is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Wow, that looks fantastic. Oh, beautiful. Look at that, guys. So now you know how to make popiabasa, like what they sell at Ramadan markets. That's a beautiful shop. <laughs> Thank you so much, Debbie. <laughs> Okay, so just the sauce. I made the sauce and left it at home and put it in my kitchen for about two days, four days. Sure, sure. It'll be a bit thicker because it's still down with some hot water and you're good to go. Okay, okay, cool. Easy. Yeah, you don't need to buy plum sauce. You know how our Chinese popiang, you need the plum sauce, blah, 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 and all that. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's easier. All right. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Debbie. Um, we look forward to the recipe, guys. If you want the recipe, make sure you sign up at MalaysianChefs.com and we will send out the PDF for you once it's ready. And also, we're going to add this to our uh, one of our upcoming e-magazines as well because it's so beautiful. And, um, yeah, thanks again, Debbie. I really appreciate this. Every time Debbie goes live, uh, yeah, Zaleha says, uh, it's so beautiful. Every time Debbie goes live, she makes something that really intrigues me because it's so different to the kind of food that I cook. All right. Um, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, we will see you back here. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Maybe we are back tomorrow. <laughs> I've lost track. Uh, but, yeah, guys, uh, keep your eyes peeled for the announcements. We're doing so many lives this week. I've lost track now. Um, so, yeah. Thanks again, everyone. And we shall see you back here. Uh, at our next broadcast and thanks again debbie i'll see you next time ciao